हेलो गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन एम एम ऑडिबल यस सो आई थिंक टुडे वेरी फ्यू पीपल ज्वाइन मे बी बिकॉज ऑफ द फेस्टिवल सीजन्स so uh, we can start the session it is already uh, 704 so so i welcome you all uh, to this uh, pmrf uh, problem solving session uh, every week i take this session uh, every tuesday at 7 pm <coughs> i take the assignments of the course named cell culture technologies and today is the 6 week assignment that we are solving uh, here so we will, we will directly uh, start with the questions uh, first question is astrogalia astrogalia uh, what does it mean what uh, there are some answers uh, given like astrogalia maintains or maintain the cellular homeostasis Uh, they are immune cells of brain they form myelin sheath or astrogalia the uh, one answer is none of the above any one of you yes uh, all uh, prem has answered correctly astrogalia maintains the cellular homeostasis in the neurons so i will uh, now uh, talk you about some of uh, the concepts re related to this question so in the nervous system there are two types of cells one or the neurons which have the main role in uh, supplying the Elect supplying the signal from uh, one part of the body to another part, or from the uh, nervous system to the different parts of the body. And for the functioning of the neurons, there are some supporting cells which are called uh, glial cells or glia. So uh, these supporting cells they are of uh, three types. One was the one uh, of them are the astrocytes or astroglia. which was uh, asked in the uh, previous question another type of cells are oligodendrocytes and third type of set, uh, cell is microglia so astrocytes uh, they they are the type of cells like uh, here you can see the shape of the cell it, it has a irregular star shaped morphology and the function of uh, this astrocyte is is uh, it supports the communication between the neurons and it also uh, maintains the homeostasis of the neurons as it was mentioned in the question another another type of cell oligodendrocyte it is attached like this uh, in the in the neuron and it speeds up the transmission of information uh, in the, in the neuron and it allows the neuron to communicate the quickly or to transmit the signal quickly and third type of supporting cell or glial cell is microglia and uh, it is the uh, it is a macrophage special type of macrophage in in the in immune system in the cns so uh, it has the function in in the immune cell, immune defense in the cell if if there is a or foreign Uh, bodies uh, or antigens in the foreign antigens in the nervous system uh, the function of microglia is to eliminate those so talking more about the astrogalia which uh, was uh, asked in the question so they are also called astrocytes and uh, uh, they they are uh, their origin is uh, from uh, neural cells of ectodermal ectoderm and neuroepithelium they are originated from ectoderm and neuroepithelium and they have the heterogeneous morphology uh, like this is the picture earlier there was uh, some uh, 
uh, picture and this is the actual picture of uh, these astrocytes they have the star shaped morphology but irregular not not the defined star shaped morphology and their function is to maintain the homeo homeostasis and uh, they also have the role in defense uh, of the central nervous system uh, talking more about these astrocytes uh, they actually uh, uh, they actually have uh, the function uh, in the uh, sinus development and aging also and they also maintain the homeostasis at the all levels of the central nervous system uh, and from the developmental stage to the ma uh, when the when the when uh, the maturation stage so they maintain at all this uh, all, all the levels of homeostasis like in the molecular uh, uh, homo molecular stage uh, they maintain the ion homeostasis like uh, the concentration of ions in um, concentration of ions in uh, uh, in different cells and and the membrane potential uh, because of these ions they also maintain this uh, these astrocytes also regulate the ph uh, in the central nervous system they also regulate the water and uh, water transport and the water transport homo homeostasis and neurotransmitter homeostasis how much these neurotransmitters should be uh, secreted uh, so all this is regulated by these astrocytes at cellular level uh, they also uh, regulate homo homeostasis well, due to these astrocytes uh, they help in the neurogenesis how much neurogenesis should take uh, should be should take place in in the nervous system neurogenesis means formation of new nerves and neuronal development in uh, or neuronal guidance uh, guidance uh, these astrocytes have a role or they have also role in synaptogenesis uh, maintenance of the sy sy synaptic fluid or sy uh, these synaptic synapses so uh, they have the role in in the cellular level also and they also have the role in uh, metabolic homeostasis like the uh, metabolism uh, in in the nervous system how uh, how how uh, they also regulate uh, the rate of metabolism in the uh, in the in the nervous system like the glycogen synthesis and storage in the sinus regulation of the local blood flow so uh, they are the very good supporter cells they they uh, they maintain all uh, the homeostatic functions at at every level and they also uh, regulate the organ homo homeostasis like control the blood brain barrier operation of the lymphatic uh, system the, it is also regulated by these astrocytes it also uh, regulate uh, chemo sensing uh, regulation of energy balance and food uptake or sleep homeostasis it this all is regulated by astrocytes so you can say that uh, these astrocytes control the homeostasis at all the levels uh, from the molecular uh, level to the whole organ level like this is the organ level home homeostasis control of the blood brain uh, barrier and lymphatic system second question is uh, it is related to another type of glial cell uh, which is the microglia and uh, uh, the answers related to microglia are uh, microglia maintain the cellular homeostasis microglia are immune cells of the brain uh, see uh, part of the answer is form they form the myelin sheath and uh, d part is none of the above so uh, what what is the answer anyone from the audience so the answer is uh, as i already said in the first slide when, when i was giving introduction of all the glial cells i said that uh, this microglia they have the role uh, in immune system uh, or, or immune defense of the brain so they are the immune cells of the brain so b part is the correct answer so uh, so uh, these microglia uh, they are the type of neuronal support cells or neuroglia neuroglia are all the types of cells in the nervous system and they are the support cells 
and why they are called microglia because of their small size as compared to the other uh, support cells or other glial cells like I showed you in uh, this picture the, there are three types of cells astrocytes uh, oligodendrocytes and micro microglia and these microglia have the smallest size as compared to all the uh, cells of the nervous system so that's why they are named as microglia uh, uh, they function uh, as a uh, immune uh, support cells and they are the resident immune cells or they are the resident uh, macrophages of the central nervous system. Uh, they are itself present in the central nervous system. They do not migrate from the blood or uh, like other uh, types of cells like monocytes and other types of cells. They can also migrate in the central nervous system but they are the resident uh, uh, macrophages that are present in the central nervous system. And they also have the uh, role in homeostasis during the development and also in the adult and aging phase of the central nervous system. In this picture, uh, like I have shown that uh, these uh, invaders are foreign particles. If they invade uh, the, if they invade the uh, central nervous system, uh, and you may be uh, knowing that there is a there is a phys physical barrier uh, in the central nervous system which is the blood brain barrier, barrier and this blood brain barrier actually interrupts most of the foreign uh, particles or foreign invaders if uh, if these uh, invaders are uh, foreign antigens they invade this blood, blood brain barrier then uh, there is the proper immune system in the central nervous system and the main uh, component of this immune system is the microglia First, when when these invaders or uh, foreign particles they are detected, these uh, by they are detected by these surveillance microglia, and after uh, they are detected, these microglia uh, they are activated, and due to uh, the activation, uh, the transformation of these mm -hmm. invaders by phagocytosis, and uh, they are phagocytosized and uh, they are uh, removed from the central nervous system. Third question is density gradient centrifugation utilizes a column with dash density from top to bottom. The answers are decreasing density from top to bottom. Second one is the increasing density from top to bottom. Uh, C part is the same density and D part is none of the above. What will be the answer? Only one person is uh, answering the questions. What about others? You can answer if you can guess also, or if you know something about the gradient centrifugation, you can uh, you can uh, think what should be the density gradient from top of the centrifuge tube to the bottom of the centrifuge tube. Uh, yeah try try to make the session interactive if if uh, you have any doubts between uh, the questions or whatever i explain uh, related to the questions so if you have any doubt you can uh, directly unmute yourself or you can uh, raise your hand or you can directly uh, write your doubt in the chat box so the answer is b so the density uh, from the top to the bottom is increasing that means uh, in in the bottom there is a more uh, density as com uh, as compared to the top of the this uh, centrifuge tube. So uh, this density gradient centrifugation is a type of centrifugation technique. There are the lots of uh, centrifugation techniques. Uh, most common or the density gradient centrifugation or or differential centrifugation and one type of centrifugation is normal centrifugation which is uh, normally done. This den density uh, gradient uh, centrifugation it uh, it is done to isolate or uh, purify uh, particles, biomolecules or cell structures and uh, <coughs> They, they, uh, why it is not uh, done? Uh, the name density gradient is used because uh, in in this density gradient uh, centrifugation, some uh, some gradient 
this liquid is used density gradient liquid is used uh, to centrifuge the uh, different particles biomolecules according to their densities or according to their sedimentation rate so uh, this density gradient centrifugation is established by layering a liquid of decreasing den densities in the centrifugation tube uh, it is a decreasing densities from uh, bottom to top of the uh, the centrifuge tube so uh, different uh, li liquids or the different uh, densities of the same liquid can be placed in a centrifuge tube so uh, in in the bottom there is a more density and at the top of uh, this centrifuge tube there is a less density this liquid gradient the liquid is more simply the liquid is filled in the centrifuge tube first the liquid is filled after that the sample we want to uh, separate or uh, we want to uh, purify that sample is then uh, added to the centrifuge tube and after that the this gradient uh, density gradient centrifugation is done earlier you were aware uh, of the normal centrifugation in the normal centrifugation you directly add your sample you directly add your sample maybe the cells or different biomolecules or or nanoparticles you add directly the solution in the centrifuge tube and you centrifuge and you will get the pellet pellet of the cells or uh, particles but here you add some extra thing which is the layering liquid or uh, layering liquid with the uh, with the different densities and on above that uh, the our sample is added so particles uh, that uh, are separated uh, on on the basis of this principle particles that are more dense than a solvent will sediment while as that that are less dense will float so for example if if there is only uh, sol one solvent present i am giving the example it is not the i am not talking about density gradient so there are all, only one solvent present in uh, the centrifuge tube and this uh, has a one uh, density so if you if you centrifuge it at a some particular speed after uh, centrifugation the particles which have the den more density uh, than uh, this solvent they will they will sediment and they will come to the bottom and the uh, the particles which have the less density they will float and this type of uh, this mechanism is used in the gradient centrif uh, gradient uh, cent density gradient centrifugation because in de density gradient centrifugation different densities of liquids are used so uh, every time uh when there is a high if there is a high density for some type of particle so uh, i will i will uh, explain you maybe uh, here uh, you you will you were not able to grasp it but i, I will uh, show in a picture representation in the next slide so particles are suspended uh, at the point where the density of the particle is equal to the surrounding medium so if uh, when when the particles penetrate this liquid layer it penetrates the only those layers which have the less density uh, uh, which have the less density as compared to the particle so because the particle is a high density so it will move uh, it will move through this liquid but maybe some layers at the bottom they have the high density as compared to this particle and this particle will not move these layers it will remain suspended at these layers so because of uh, this mechanism uh, particles of different densities can be separated uh, in in a different layers like uh, showing in uh, this figure uh, i have given the one example of sucrose gradient here the sucrose solution is used to prepare the gradient so 66% maybe uh, sometimes 70% or 50% sucrose uh, is made and it depends on the sample or or the uh, which you want to separate then the uh, some other dilutions of this sample are also made 66% sucrose maybe this is 50% this is 40% and this is 30% i am i am taking the example then first this 60% sucrose layer is poured here then 50% then 40% then 30% so this uh, this whole centrifuge tube has a density gradient uh, this part has a more dense this has a less density and uh, the middle part has a intermediate density 
these phases actually uh, they are not the sharp separation like uh, from this line there is a sharp separation but uh, there is some uh, mixing here also but somehow uh, this is more dense and this is less dense because they do not mix we have to add them slowly uh, from uh, from from the side of the tube so uh, when we add the sample here at the top for example this is the uh, this is uh, uh, here the density is 30 here it is uh, i'm giving the example here for example here the density we have, we have added uh, 30 percent so consider 30 density consider it max give in the give it the sum number 30 percent it is the uh, 40 percent solution 50 percent solution and 66 percent solution so my it has some density and these uh, layers also has some different density this has a more density and uh, the less percent of solution has a less density so when we add the sample after adding the sample if the density for example this is a 30 and we have uh, different types we have the sample we have the different types of particles have the density also uh, 30 and 50 40 and 50 so if we have the samples of 40 and 50 uh, we have only uh, two types of uh, uh, density two types of particles in the, in the sample so give me the answer if this is the 30 density and we have the particles which have the 40 and 50 density should these uh, both the particles they should remain here in the here or they should pass this this 30 percent sucrose anyone samaj aa raha hello are you able to understand this So as I already said, when the density of the particle is more than the density of the fluid, the, uh, the, this particle uh, will uh, sediment and it will go below this fluid. But when the density uh, is lower uh, than this fluid, it will remain uh, in this fluid or above this fluid. As the here the density is, uh, for example, is the 30%. I am giving the uh, some uh, hypothetical value to this. So the I consider density 30. So the density of uh, my particle is 40 and 50. Obviously the density of particle is more more than 30 in my both types of particles and both 40 and 50 will pass. Here uh, the density is 40 and one type of particle uh, there I have sample I have the sample with two types of particle and here uh, the this uh, gradient uh, density is 40 and my particle density is also 40 now one type of particle which has the density 40 it will remain embedded here in in this 40 uh, 40 uh, percent sucrose solution and it will not pass uh, below this because below here is a 50 percent solution it will not go in the solution which has a higher density uh, than this but uh, my another uh, uh, sample has the 50 density it will uh, not remain here it will go uh, down and it will be in the 50 uh, percent sucrose solution with a with a higher density so because of that because of the de these density gradient our two particles will be uh, separated we can take uh, this density gradient out of this tube and we can t first take uh, this sample and then we can we will take this sample are you uh, I, am i able to enter uh, are you, are you able to understand it properly? Should I move ahead? Koi question hai to pose sakte So I will move to the next question. Question number four is which of these is not a cell of a nervous system? Neuron, astroglia, Schwann cell, nephron. So 
I already uh, discussed about this astrogilia neuron you already know Schwann cells they are also the supporter cells of peripheral neural system and this nephron this is not the cell of the neural system it is a, a filtration unit of the kidney this nephron yes yes Archana so in this slide I will tell you different types of uh, neuroglial cells or different uh, types of uh, cells that are present in the nervous system as you know that there are uh, two components of the nervous system one is the central nervous system another is the peripheral nervous system central uh, nervous system has uh, these types of cells like astrocells ependymal cells oligodendrocytes and uh, microglia as I already said uh, these astrocytes they maintain the homeostasis they control the level of neurotransmitter they regulate the homeostasis at every level of the uh, nervous system ependymal cells they line the spinal cord and uh, ventricles of the brain uh, they are also involved uh, they, are, they, are, they have also a role in the production of cerebrospinal fluid which is present uh, the, which, is a, which is a question which is present in the brain oligodendrocytes uh, they they myelinate uh, CNS uh, axons and they also provide a structural framework and uh, the other function which I said they help in the uh, fast conduction of the uh, impulses or electrical signals and microglia they are the brain's immune cells they remove the dead cells or pathogens by phagocytosis and in the peri peripheral neural system there are two types of cells one is the uh, satellite cell and it is another is the Schwann cell this uh, cell these they surround the uh, neuron cell bodies in the glia they regulate the neurotransmitter levels and these Schwann cells they myelinate uh, neurons in the peripheral neural system they also maintain uh, regenerate uh, they also have the role in maintenance and the regeneration in the in the, uh, in, in the neurons after in injury so there are, these are all types of cells uh, they are there that are present in the nervous system and uh, so the answer here is the nephron which I already said which uh, is the filtration unit of the kidney which of uh, another question number five which of these is uh, recommended density gradient medium semi-prep or semi-osmo opti-prep opti-osmo anyone knows the answer yes opti-prep so opti-prep is uh, the commercially available uh, density gradient So this OptiPrep, it is uh, made up of uh, iodoxinol, uh, this chemical, which is like the sucrose or different other uh, types of density gradients are used. So this iodoxinol, uh, this opt 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 OptiPrep is the, this iodoxinol based gradient uh, uh, which is used uh, for centrifugation. So here I am giving uh, one example. Uh, they uh, have separated uh, different types of cells uh, using this iodoxinol based gradient so uh, what they have given uh, they have given uh, the cells uh, treatment to the hep g2 or huh7 cell lines with the this chemical doxorubicin which is the anti-cancer drug and uh, after that uh, they uh, removed the cells and the cells are in this medium and they added to this iodoxinol based or optiprep, uh, optiprep based uh, uh, gradient so different densities of this optiprep uh, was prepared and they were added in the centrifuge tube and after that uh, this media is added and they centrifuged it at 800 g for 30 minutes and after centrifugation uh, different uh, types of cells are separated based on the densities so these dead uh, dead cells they have uh, more density as compared to live cells or senescent cells so they have the different size and density so they were separated so if they actually want to uh, study uh, these uh, senescent uh, cells so they obtained these senescent cells from this place and culture to uh, study 
here they have given the picture how they have uh, centrifuge this or how they have used this optiprep uh, or iodoxinol based gradient so this is the structure of iodoxinol uh, it is a very uh, large chemical compound which is used to make this gradient so based on uh, your answer in question 5 uh, like optiprep we are talking about optiprep what is the density of the uh, what uh, is the density of the recommended density graded medium what is the recommended density of the optiprep so the answer is 1.32 uh, uh, grams per ml so it is in the range of uh, i think uh, this 1 to 1.3 or 1.4 grams per ml and uh, these are not the answers 0 0.2 0 0.3 mg or 0 0.3 gram or 1.3 mg or very less so in all the cases uh, i have checked the different papers also and they have uh, used it in uh, in different uh, concentrations or different density uh, densities because uh, depending on the sample uh, we can uh, vary the concern uh, different densities or but here uh, i think uh, they have uh, maybe uh, there, there's a this typing mistake it, they have used 1.3 grams per liter and this is very less concentration very very less maybe th this is the uh, it should be grams per ml in in this paper and uh, on the on the on the basis of different types of cells uh, you can use uh, different types of uh, densities and here i can paste this uh, link in the chat box so you can check you can check this uh, link you can check this link and uh, it contains different uh, types or different it uh, my it uh, this it actually is a pdf file of this optiprep only so uh, on the basis of different types of cells or different types of samples what should be the densities like they have uh, mentioned uh, if you are separating fibroblast, macrophage, endothelial cells, what should be the density gradient? Uh, or uh, different uh, types of hippocampal cells and different uh, uh, cells or different tissues they have mentioned. You can check this. I am I am uh, pasting. Oh, sorry. So I pasted the link in the chat box. So you can uh, check this uh, document. So now the question number seven. Density gradient uh, centrifugation is based on what is the principle of this? It is based on only uh, beyond a density, only sedimentation rate, both A and B, and uh, none of A and B. So uh, the answer is both A and B, this uh, density gradient centrifugation, it's based on uh, both uh, beyond density and uh, the sedimentation rate. Uh, as you know that when the object is placed in the, in the water, the water, uh, you may have uh, studied this, the concept of buoyancy, which is the upthrust force by the fluid on, on the object. When you suspend your samples or particles in the fluid, there is upward force uh, by by this fluid, and uh, which 
uh, and on the basis of this upward thrust, the sedimentation or of of uh, the this your object or your particle uh, depends. And this uh, centrifugation also depends on uh, these uh, things. What is the bionic density of the object? Uh, it uh, it depends on this bionic density. How much buoyancy force is applied on onto the flu on onto this sample? So also the density of the fluid in which it is suspended, which uh, we, we are already talking in the density gradient, there are different densities of the fluid. So so uh, the uh, sample will move according to the densities which I already discussed in the earlier questions. And uh, uh, if uh, in in the normal ascent in the normal uh, uh, this uh, when when we, when we place our particle in in the fluid without centrifugation, only the downward force is the gravitational force and on the basis of this gravitational force uh, our this particle uh, may be it may be segmented or how much it may be dispersed or uh, in 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 this uh, in in the fluid but uh, when we uh, apply centrifugation force there also this buoyancy force acts uh, or this buoyancy density density uh, have the role uh, this buoyancy density have the role there because uh, these our, we have to move our particles uh, in in this from this fluid to the bottom. So this also has the role, and uh, this sedimentation uh, rate also have the role role uh, here. So that is why the answer is both A and B. In our centrifugation force, if it is the rotor um, open bucket uh, uh, centrifugation, so in the open bucket, the samples uh, we, uh, the centrifugation force will be directly. Uh, in in the bottom of the tube, but in the uh, this fixed bucket, maybe uh, there the centrifugation force is little bit in in the walls of the centrifugation tube. So here, both the bion density and sedimentation rate have uh, the have have the role in uh, in uh, in uh, in uh, density gradient centrifugation. So there are also uh, uh, import one important type of centrifugation, which is a differential uh, centrifugation. Earlier we only uh, were discussing this uh, because of the questions were related to the uh, this density gradient centrifugation. So differential gradient centrifugation. Uh, here the samples are uh, separated, or uh, different uh, samples of different densities or different particle, different sizes. Uh, or different uh, uh, mass uh, size uh, if, if the samples have a different mass they are separated by this series of uh, centrifugation steps with the with the increasing force of centrifug uh, centrifug with, with the increasing centrifugal force for example here in the first step for example the centrifugation is done at the less force for example 100 uh, g and uh, some types of particles they will uh, because they have the higher density or higher mass they they will they will uh, come to the bottom and other will be suspended in the fluid so we can decant uh, this fluid and we can separate this and if we increase the sedimentation uh, this uh, force uh, uh, centrifugal force. For example, in the second step, we uh, we are centrifugation centrifuging it at uh, 2000 g. Here, some other types of particles can be separated, which have the more density as compared to these more density and more mass. And in the third step, we will do same thing, and fourth step, we will do same same thing. So, in this differential centrifugation series of in, in increased centrifugation uh, force and uh, forces are done. So, because of this, we will be able to separate uh, the samples of different uh, sizes or different densities. So, another question is, uh, dash motor neurons regulate size of the muscle spindle or uh, intrafusal fiber. Which type of neurons? There are uh, three types of neurons: alpha, beta, and gamma uh, motor neurons. Which one of uh, these alpha, beta, and gamma? They regulate the muscle spindle or intra intrafusal fiber. Anyone? 
Yes, the answer is C. Gamma motor neurons do to regulate uh, the size or contraction of these interfusal fibers. And uh, what about the extra uh, fusal fibers? Which type of neurons? Alpha, beta, or gamma? So alpha type of uh, motor neurons, they regulate uh, the contraction. Uh, size means uh, when they contract, the size uh, decreases. When they relax, the size of the fiber increases. One, it is related to that. So as you know that uh, the these muscles, the neurons, they contract only after the uh, innervation from uh, some uh, some uh, this motor neuron. When the motor neuron give, gives the signal, and after receiving the signal, they contract. So here the answer is alpha motor neurons. They regulate the extra fusal fibers. So uh, there are two types of uh, muscle fibers in the in the muscle spindle. One are extra fusal fibers, and one is the intrafusal fiber. Extra fusal fiber is the main bulk of the muscle fiber. It uh, and the intrafusal is the small portion which is present inside this uh, muscle. Uh, five muscle spindle and they both have the role in uh, contraction of uh, of the muscle and the, the they are um, why they are different uh, it's because of the uh, muscle innervations uh, innervations motor innervations they what they are getting from the central nervous system so extra muscle fibers they comprise of the bulk of the muscle and from the major four generating structure, uh, these extra fusal they as they are the bulk and they have the more um, muscle cells, so they uh, from the major four generating structures and they are innervated by alpha motor neurons. These alpha motor neurons innervate and they give the signal. Uh, uh, signal comes through these alpha motor neurons and uh, they they tell these uh, extra fusal fibers to contract. And they also uh, control and regulate their contraction. And intrafusal muscle fibers, they are buried, buried in the muscle, and they contain efferent uh, receptors for the stretch. Uh, uh, but they also contain the contractile elements or contractile uh, these muscles, contractile cells. And these gamma motor neurons, they innervate intrafusal muscles and control their contraction. So this was all about the extra fusal and intrafusal muscle fibers and uh, how the different types of uh, neurons regulate uh, their contraction. Another question is uh, dash clustering occurs in microtubes at the neuromuscular junction. What a nuclear uh, clustering, acetylcholine receptor clustering or cytoplasm or estrogelia. Yes, the answer is acetylcholine receptor clustering occurs on uh, myotubes at the uh, neuromuscular junction. Actually, acetylcholine uh, uh, has a key uh, role or key function in the development of the neuromuscular junction. So, uh, because of uh, the clustering of these or because of the high density of uh, these acetylcholine uh, uh, receptors the neuromuscular junction is formed and it has been uh, known that uh, there is a very high density like 10,000 uh, receptors per micro square micrometer of the synapse uh, uh, ma, are, ma, this this uh, high density of acetylcholine receptors are present so clustering of these acetylcholine receptors uh, 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 it leads to the, this neuromuscular junction. So this was all about uh, the uh, this sixth uh, assignment questions.
so i hope you have understood all of this and this is uh, the youtube channel where i upload uh, these videos and there are also other uh, videos present if you missed some part you can uh, watch these videos or you can share with your friends who have missed the session so uh, thank you so much for uh, joining the session uh, if you have any more questions you can ask Anyone have any question or should we conclude the session? Any question uh, may be related to the uh, uh, questions or related to the concepts that I have uh, taught you in this session or maybe you have some uh, other questions related to the course. So I think uh, there are no questions. If there are no questions, I will uh, conclude the session. I will see you in the uh, next week at uh, 7 p.m. to next my coming set coming Tuesday. And happy happy Dashera uh, to everyone. Enjoy your holidays. So thank you thank you for joining.